This segment brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Good morning, Deb and around Kansas viewers. This morning, I want to share the story of a Muskogee Creek leader who led over 10,000 men, women, and children to safety during the American Civil War in Indian Territory. His name was Apatho Yahola, and he was born in Tuckabachi Town in the old Muskogee homeland of Alabama. He made the forced march on the Muskogee's own Trail of Tears. He opposed Indian removal and would stand in opposition to the Muskogee people taking up sides during the American Civil War as well. Hungry, cold, exhausted, terrified. Wintry January winds blew as the refugees trickled in 10 to 20 at a time until nearly 10,000 men, women, and children had made the dangerous trek from the Indian Territory to the small military post. With hardly enough supplies for the men at the post, Fort Rowe was not prepared to feed and clothe the followers of Apothel Yahala after their flight from the Indian Territory. Dissent amongst the various tribes living in the Indian Territory, a lack of early Union support during the war, and the Union's abandonment of Forts Arbuckle, Washita, and Cobb in 1861 created a power vacuum. For the pro-Confederate tribal factions of the five southeastern nations, this was a prime opportunity to seize control and prove their loyalty to Richmond. Not all tribal leaders believed Confederate promises, and old animosities flared amongst tribal factions within the Muscogee Nation. Turning against those Muscogees who supported the Confederacy, Apatho Yahala was branded a renegade and an enemy by his own people. Creeks who wished to remain neutral followed his leadership. Doggedly pursued by Confederate troops through the Indian Territory, Apatho Yahala and his followers fought a series of running battles as they headed north to the safety of Union-controlled Kansas. In November 1861 at Round Mountain, and in December at Chusto Talasa and Chustanalaha, Apatho Yahala's troops fought against Confederate Muscogee and Cherokee warriors. By December 1861, what was left of Apatho Yahala's followers walked to Fort Row. When they arrived, they discovered little food and water and few blankets or supplies. Within two months of their arrival, over 250 Muscogees perished. Hundreds of frostbitten, frozen limbs were amputated in order to save their owners. Many of the beleaguered continued to walk until they reached Fort Belmont in search of sustenance. Ironically, many of those men who wished to remain neutral were so incensed by the treatment they received at the hands of their own Muscogee and fellow Cherokee, they walked to Fort Scott, where they would join the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd Regiments of the Indian Home Guard, only to return to the Indian Territory to fight to preserve their homes, their families, and their futures. Apatho Yahala, sadly, would not live to see the war's end. He died in Kansas in 1863 at the Sac and Fox Agency. He was buried near his daughter, who succumbed to disease earlier. I cannot imagine his anguish at having to watch his young daughter die, only to join her shortly thereafter. Today, his trek for freedom is commemorated along Kansas highways that traverse his route, and the citizens of Fredonia, Kansas, have erected markers and placards that denote the former location of Fort Row. I hope you'll join me in the Bleeding Kansas Lecture Series in Lecompton, where I will talk about Apatho Yahala, the Muscogees, and their flight to freedom. Thanks for watching. Happy November Wednesday morning. I'm Deb Goodrich, and I'll see you somewhere around Kansas. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com.